So, hi guys, this is Captain Fantastic, here to bring you wonderful poetry by William Blake, the Tiger, Andy. A uh, truly magnificent poem. Please remember that we'll be working with the meter, uh, looking at what, uh, what that is, what kind of meter. We'll be working with assonance and alliteration, uh, all that stuff that helps create, uh, in this case, a very beautiful and uh, very powerful series of images uh, that go on throughout this poem. Also, uh, bear in mind that this poem is talking about a tiger, and it imagines the tiger being created in a forge that is a smithy. Uh, and it imagines sort of the guard as a, as a smith working in a forge, creating this beautiful but also frightening tiger. Uh, that explains a lot of the images in this poem. You get, uh, you get a metaphor, the metaphor of a uh, of a smithy or a forge is an extended metaphor that goes through several of the verses and uh, so if you don't underst understand what the images are about imagine God holding a hammer, smithing, creating the tiger upon an anvil and a lot of stuff will become clear. But I'll read the poem, I'll stop after every verse to explain uh, difficult expressions so you don't have to do Anything else uh, at home apart from just listening to this video, hopefully, and then you'll understand the entire poem. Here goes. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Notice in this verse, I think it's easy to understand, easy enough to understand. Uh, the speaker is asking a question. What kind of creator could create something as frightening as the tiger. That's the last two lines, especially. Notice also that it <clears throat> ends in a question. Several of these uh, these stanzas or verse, uh, verses have got questions in them, and you should think back to the lamb, which also uh, is a series of questions, and this is, of course, a companion piece to the lamb. That is, uh, a sister poem to the lamb. Here goes the second verse. In what distant deeps of skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare cease the fire? And here you get the image of the forge for the first time. Uh, and the hand that ceases the fire, of course, um, you know, the, the tiger being created inside the fire, and the, the little line with the wings, of course, refers to the image of an angel or a, a god with wings on. And and yes, and notice the deeps or the skies, of course, a metaphor for heaven or hell. So was the tiger created in heaven or hell? What kind of god could create a tiger? Is it a god or a devil? You might ask. We go on. Third stanza. And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart. And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? And the word you might not understand here is sinews. It means simply sina in Danish. So who could create the sinews of your heart? Who would be strong enough to create the sinews of a tiger's heart? Um, yeah, and I don't want to explain the entire poem, so I'll just move on to uh, stanza number four. What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? And here you get, of course, the image of the smithy very explicitly. Furnace is a hot, fiery place uh, where you can create works of metal. Yes, and um, again, questions, uh, what dead dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? And questions as to the nature of the creator of the tiger. And we move on to the last two stanzas. Coming here, when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Okay, very explicit reference to the lamb here, but the real problem might be the first two lines, when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears. Um, what does that have to do with the tiger, you might ask? Well, uh, I was told when I was in university that that was a reference to uh, what we have here on, in a picture 
uh, drawing by William Blake on the right, of God throwing the angels out of heaven down into hell. The stars, of course, Lucifer means the bright one. It's also a name for the devil. Uh, so the, the fallen angels are viewed here in these two lines as fallen stars here surrendering to God and being thrown down to hell. Did God smile when he did that? You know, expelling the traitors, the rebels into hell. Um, is God vengeful? Is the question that's being asked. We'll move on to the last stanza, uh, which is almost a repetition of the first. See if you can spot the word that is different. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? One word different from stanza one. I'll let you find that on your own. See you in class, and I hope you enjoyed this, in my, my view, uh, quite wonderful poem. Cheers!